here. Um, tonight turned out to be a very busy night, as you can see. Normally, as I said, this is not a, this is not a typical Vanwood Council <laughs> meeting where we have to actually uh, count heads. Um, so I want to, um, we're here because we want to shine attention on and say thank you to the accomplishments of the uh, track team. So I want to call forward to Coach Jeff. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Cagle. I'm one of the head coaches of the track and field program at the high school. This is Coach McGriff. He's my co-head coach. We're here to recognize the young ladies on our track and field team for their amazing accomplishments this year. This winter, we won the Group 3 Indoor State Championship. And this spring, we won the North 2 Group 4 State Sectional Championship. And then we won the Group 4 State Championship. So we, we won the highest level team state titles in both indoor track and outdoor track classification and it's our greatest season ever. We had, we had success in, in just about every area that we could. In addition to winning the, the team titles, we won individual championships, we won relay championships, and we have uh, a number of young ladies that earn All-American status as well. And our, our season, it's long, we've been going pretty much since Thanksgiving, and we just wrapped up yesterday. We had the national championship meet this weekend in Philadelphia. So I ask the young ladies to come up. Please just line up over here, girls. So this isn't everybody, but this is a core group of, of the young ladies who ran on our uh, state, or competed in our state championship meet when we won the group four championship. The end, Abby Elliott ran the 4x800. Uh, Sophia Catalano also ran the 4x800. Uh, Kira Kelly ran on a 4x400. Uh, Danielle Most, 400 hurdles, and she's run on the 4x400 also. Janai Berry, fan with Vimes. Janai ran uh, 400, 800, and 4x400. Grace Kennedy, uh, 400, 400 hurdles, and 4x400. And Julia Jackson, uh, 100, 200, 400, and 4x400. Uh, Julia was the state group four champion individually in the, the 100 and the 400. And we won uh, indoors. We were the, we wanted to meet a champions in a 4x400. That was uh, Grace, Danielle, and I, and Julia. Julia wanted to meet a champions indoors in a 400. And then uh, we won a group four state championship in a 4x400. Four that was Grace, Kira, Janai, and, uh, and Julia. And just this past weekend, came in fourth in the national meet in a 4x400. So all Americans in a 4x400. Four that was Grace, Danielle, Janai, and Julia. And Julia was also an all American in the 400 as she was indoors, and we were all Americans in a 4x400 four four indoors as well. So, there's too many championships to go over in the interest of time and too many school records, but this has all been a surreal and incredible journey for us. Uh, most coaches only dream of, of having seasons like this, and we had a whole year like this. Uh, and it's, it's just been uh, amazing. It's been surreal. It's been all the above, all the, the emotions that come from behind victories. And it's just a, a fantastic group of young ladies. Uh, we're saying goodbye to, to Grace and to Julia. They ran our, our last race, or their last race with us yesterday. It was a very bittersweet moment because we, we ran so well, but we had to say goodbye. But uh, we're going to forge on. We just have to do it without 
uh, that Grace and Julia, they're going off to college. Grace will be at Lehigh and Julia will be at Duke. They're continuing their track and field careers and uh, won't be their coaches anymore, but we'll still be their biggest fans. And I'd also like to recognize uh, our track parents as well. We just have a, a group of world-class track parents. They've been, they've been great. Uh, you know, sometimes when you have a team this good, you can have difficult kids, you can have difficult parents, and we haven't had any of that. And it's just, it's just been uh, amazing to coach them. And uh, hopefully someday uh, we'll have other groups this strong, but we'll always be talking about these as, as some of the best ever. So thank you, everyone, uh, for having us tonight. Uh, again, thanks for all your support, and thanks to young ladies. They're, they're just an amazing group of kids. So I'm kind of in awe of you girls, really. Um, and to the seniors who are going out, um, good luck, congratulations, and thank you. Thank you for the great memories um, that you've been a part of to the girls that have another season or two ahead of you. We look forward to like great trailblazing events that you guys are going to do. Um, it kind of takes my breath away, right? I'm a mother of three boys who are athletes, and I understand the highs and the lows and the commitment um, day after day, all year round. And you guys um, have left <coughs> an indelible mark on the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education and your high school. And they will be talking about you and your accomplishments for years and years to come. So I'm really glad that you were able to come here tonight um, and get the public recognition that you guys so deserve. So thank you. So I'm going to leave this. Maybe we can get one group picture. How do you want to do it, Tom? Great. You're and now we have one last group which is our volleyball so as Volleyball's here in the house. Oh, good. It's wintering, cousin. So I'm going to ask our Councilwoman Erin McElroy Barker, who actually has a student um, on your volleyball team, to take over. So I'm going to let you guys do all the talking. Um, the reason I'm introducing is because um, <clears throat> boys volleyball is near and dear to my heart as my younger son plays and got called up for states, which he was thrilled about to be on such an awesome team of great guys uh, which also found tremendous success this year for the first time ever um, boys varsity volleyball won state sectional title uh, for njsia north section two um, and of course we're four time four piece four counties um, so uh, we invited you guys here uh, coach rock war and matthew ritter you guys want to say some things congratulations Um, I'm going to make this pretty brief. Um, it's been kind of a whirlwind year. This has been, without a doubt, for our entire program, our successful year. Not only at the accomplishment of varsity, but JV also had a fantastic year. They won both their tournaments. They entered the Bloomfield and the Harrison tournament, and they also won our repeat JV championship. So again, uh, we're pretty solid shape. Um, when it comes to the future, volleyballs continue to grow. We are only a bigger program, and um, it's due to a lot to not only the young men you see over here, but the parents also. Um, I have been very lucky to have both an excellent staff, which is Coach Ritter, Coach Stacy, Coach Ryan, um, very supportive AD and Mr. Miller, and one parent who basically let me be a coach. And everything else that is on the extra, they do it without question. They do it enthusiastically. And that shows why this young group of men are such a close knit uh, group. Um, sometimes it's 
a little bit of a challenge for a real woman in practice. But it's all because they just love playing and they just love being at, on the court and doing whatever. Um, individual accomplishments. Sure. Individual accomplishments. Um, all state nominations are not yet, so I'm sure that some of us will get uh, our first uh, first team all state nominations. But for all county, we had um, first team all county Dr. Jeremy Zimmerman, uh, Captain Nick Schmidt, honorable mentions are uh, Reese Condone and James Lapidus. Um, <laughs> uh, Nick Schmidt also eclipsed uh, 1,000 careers assists this year which is the first ever in any volleyball program for Scotch Plains. Wow. So that was a major individual accomplishment. Um, but again, it's been a very, very humbling experience to be able to coach these guys. Um, it's not so much coaching, as I told them, it's more of a guide because they bring enthusiasm. They are probably the, how do I put this uh, nicely, the most, Intelligent, volleyball intelligent team I've ever coached. Um, when it comes to just knowing what to do, knowing where everyone is, and they look like they've been playing together for years, and they've only been together literally for maybe two or three months. So, um, just really quickly, now the roster I have Dr. Zimmerman, Dr. Nick Schmidt, senior, uh, Rupees Condon, um, junior. Guy Varela, senior James Lapidus, junior uh, Kevin, uh, uh, I can't pronounce your name wrong, Lindo, I uh, hopefully pronounced that correctly, and sophomore Chase Waxman. So, again, thank you for this honor, and we're looking forward to next year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on on the agenda, I don't know if we have Taisha Wheeler. Is she here? Is, is Taisha Wheeler outside? Because she's supposed to accept a proclamation. And if not, I can, um, I might just move ahead with the, um, okay, so that's what I may, I may do is, I may do the oath of office while, I might do, do you have a person Okay, thanks. Um, and there should be just one, right? Yes. Okay, so, Andrea, I'm going to swear you in while we're doing this, so. Okay. All right, so as we are waiting for the next... So as we are waiting for the next group to come in and continue our, our business, um, it is always very nice when we have volunteers who step forward, residents who step forward to actually um, want to participate in one of our many boards and commissions. And so, um, Andrea? Okay, An Andrea Para? Para um, is going to be sworn tonight to serve on our environmental commission, which is the three-year term. So you ready? Yeah. Okay, great. You just want to...
Sorry, he had to be out there waiting. Like I said, this is not normal. So, um, I think everybody understands that today is actually the federal holiday, the observance of Juneteenth. Um, and we are very lucky and proud in this community um, that we have acknowledged this now for the second year in a row. Um, and this past weekend, we had our second annual uh, Juneteenth uh, celebration. Uh, which was brought to us by our, our local social justice matters group with, in support of, uh, with support of the borough of Fanwood and the township of Scotch Plains. Um, and the committee is here tonight to accept a proclamation, um, kind of thanking, publicly thanking them. Uh, but before I ask Erin, who's our liaison to the, um, to the event, um, I just want to say it's amazing how many people have been educated in a very short period of time when you think about it, right? These last, if you went back three years or four years and you said the word Juneteenth, I don't believe that people would really understand um, or be able to articulate why. And to sit here today and to understand that there is a national holiday where banks have been closed and employers have given off and state governments um, just top down, top down is pretty a remarkable feat across the country. But I think it, it bears witness to the incredible importance of what it means. And what happened on that date, which we are celebrating today, um, and all of the implications and the conversations um, that having a holiday like this actually now has us talking about with bigger conversations to come, I think, and harder conversations um, to come, because we're literally just at the beginning. So um, I want to call you guys up and give you, come on, you guys worked hard. You deserve, you deserve some public recognition. So, Aaron. <coughs> Um, so I have had the good fortune of being the liaison to the Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation um, group that was formed a few years ago um, and then got sort of kicked into higher gear a couple years ago. Tashira Wheeler has, has been part of that effort, so I've gotten to know her a bit and, and her work on SAM, and, and, and I've had the privilege of watching the planning for Juneteenth, which is months and months and months long in the making, and I really do hope that in our communities we we can grow this event over the next several years and really bring a much wider community to attend and understand and appreciate the importance of this day. So, <clears throat> Juneteenth. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation declaring all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States shall be then thenceforward and forever free. And whereas President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation signed on September 22, 1862, became effective on January 1, 1863, thereby freeing slaves of this nation's original sin of human bondage throughout much of the United States of America. And whereas Union General Gordon Granger was dispatched to Galveston, Texas, to announce the surrender of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee, and on June 19, 1865, declared the freedom of slaves still held in human bondage in the state of Texas. And whereas Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, and Emancipation Day, has been celebrated by the African American community since 1866. And since that time has become widely recognized as an important day of commemoration and for honoring the history and contributions of African Americans. And whereas in September 2020, the New Jersey legislature enacted S-19, which declares <clears throat> Juneteenth to be an official state holiday in New Jersey. And whereas, on June 17, uh, 2021, President Joe Biden signed legislation to make Juneteenth a federal holiday, enshrining June 19 as the national day to commemorate the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas the Fanwood Borough governing body believes it is right and fitting that its residents celebrate Juneteenth with their families and reflect upon the sacrifices made 
by America's enslaved persons and their descendants in a continuous quest for human freedom and dignity. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Colleen Marr, and the Council, on behalf of the Borough of Fanwood, do proclaim June 19, 2022, as a day to commemorate the end of slavery in the United States and call upon our fellow residents to reflect upon the significance of Juneteenth in terms of American history and social justice. Um, well, first, um, my name is Sasha Wheeler. I was one of the co-chairpersons for um, this Juneteenth celebration. I have alongside with me several of our committee members. Our committee member, Ms. Annie Lucas, committee member, Liz Noe Tillman, committee member, Sheila Greenwood, and my co-chair, Michelle Burwell. Um, we just want you to thank the borough of Fenwood, Mayor Colleen Barr, and the council. Um, also, all of the participants and supporters for everything that you did to help us out to make sure that this year's Juneteenth celebration was such a success. Um, we celebrate freedom, and we're glad that we had the opportunity to do so. So thank you so much. On behalf of all of our committee, on behalf of the Board of Social Justice Matters, we thank you for your support, and we thank you. We receive this proclamation humbly and with love. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to move it here from the planning board. I just need a motion and a second uh, for Frank Gozo, who's going to be filling an unexpired term on the planning board. So second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, he will get, I don't see Frank, but he'll get sworn in at the next meeting. So thank you very much. Um, I think we're ready to, oh, we have the LGBTQ because it's Pride Month. Okay, so we'll read that into the record. I don't believe we have anybody here to accept it. We do not. Okay, thank you. LGBTQ Pride Month, June 2022. Whereas the struggle for dignity and equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning LBGTQ people is reflected in the tireless dedication of advocates and allies who strive to forge a more inclusive society. And whereas President Bill Clinton on June 2nd, 2002, declared June Gay and Lesbian Pride Month to commemorate the June 1969 Stonewall Uprising in Lower Manhattan. And on June 1st, 2009, President Barack Obama expanded the commemoration further by declaring June to Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Month. And whereas June 28th, 2022, marks the 54th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, which broke out following a police raid on the Stonewall Inn targeting LGBTQ patrons and other marginalized people in violation of their civil rights, leading to the birth of the gay right movement. And whereas LGBTQ Americans, including those who live in our local communities, face discrimination simply for being who they are and for who they love, and therefore remains much work to do to extend the promise of our country to every person. And whereas the landmark Supreme Court decision of 2015 guaranteeing marriage equality in all 50 states was a historic victory for LGBTQ Americans and continues to affirm our belief that we are all freer when we are treated as equals. And now, <clears throat> and now therefore, be it resolved that Colleen Moore, mayor of the Borough of Fanwood, here bright, proclaims June 2022 as the Borough of Fanwood's Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Questioning Pride Month. We encourage our community to focus and celebrate our LGBTQ neighbors. Thank you very, very much. Um, moving on, we have several minutes of meetings that we need to move. So we met, uh, we had our work session of May 2nd, 2022. We had our regular scheduled meeting last month of May 16th, 2022. And we had a special meeting on May 23rd, 2022, which is where we dealt with our recycling vendor. So may I have a motion, please? So move. So move. May I have a second? 
Second. Oh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Um, so welcome to the newest batch of people that are sitting here in the audience tonight. <laughs> as I as I had to tell um, everybody who kind of came in in waves, this is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> we are not that popular <laughs> in here, but um, tonight was a really good night because we got to shine a real light on the unbelievable accomplishments of our student athletes who just broke records and, you know, set Scotch Plains fanwood into places that they've never been in sports. Um, so thank you for your patience uh, for those who were able to now just come into the chambers. Um, I, just for the sake, since we do have an audience here, I want to make sure that everybody sort of understands the next couple steps on the agenda. Um, so we have a couple ordinances that we are going to put forth. First, we have one ordinance, which is going to be up for a second reading, which has a public hearing attached to it. Um, then we have three ordinances, which will be up for first reading. And the way that ordinances work is that you have a first reading, and at the next meeting you have a public hearing, second, public hearing, second reading, and adoption at the next meeting. So I am also understanding that there's many here in the audience, and so to acknowledge that you're here, I will also be amending the um, agenda to allow for the public, se public speaking section after we introduce the ordinances. So just so that we're all kind of on the same page and nobody thinks that they're not going to have a chance, understand that at the second reading is also technically, legally, the public hearing of any ordinance, and then the adoption. So I will um, ask our Chair of Administration and Finance, um, Councilwoman Erin McElroy Barker, uh, who is going to have a public hearing second reading on the first ordinance, 2022-06-R. Hold that up. And um, Russ, do you want to just give a little highlight of that one, please? So we're going to have a public hearing on the um, Fixing of tangible personal property of the borough. Uh, the reason why we had to uh, introduce and enact this ordinance is the short reason is really the state told us to, but uh, <laughs> so it's required by the state. But I think Trisha, they're going to use this to evaluate um, state aid. Right. Well, we're supposed to keep aid? track of anything that yeah. the borough buys or obtains um, over a certain dollar amount. Over, well, we, normally we had it at a thousand. It didn't seem to be enough in today's day and age, so we're moving it to three thousand. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep track of anything for our purchases above three thousand yep. dollars, and then we also have to keep track of what we dispose of it. Right. So it's just an accounting system of our, our goods. Okay. So do you want to yeah. open it? Oh. Sorry. So many microphones. Okay. I call up for second reading ordinance O-2022-06-R. This is an ordinance amending chapter 9 claims, approval and payment regulations, fixed assets and non-expendable tangible personal property of the Code of the Borough of Fanwood, County of Union, State of New Jersey. I move that a public hearing be held on said ordinance. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. I'd now like to call forward any members of the public that wish to make comments on this ordinance amending Chapter 9. Seeing that I don't see anyone that wishes to come forward, may I please have a motion to close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I move that this ordinance be adopted on second meeting and final passage, and if adopted, be published as required by law. Okay, thank you. May I have a roll call, please? Gabriel Carter? Affirm. Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Yeah. Erin Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. Great. Next, we're going to have three ordinances. Each will be called up individually. We will have a vote on introducing them, and then I will make a motion to uh, move the agenda to have the ability to have um, comment on this. So, um, again, under administration and finance, Councilwoman Erin Mackler Barker. Do you want me to read that one, or do people have it in front of them? Um, I think that you have to read. The first one is going to be amending Chapter 118, um, which is right. dogs in the public it. parks. Right. So do you want me to read that one? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to read the whole ordinance in full. Okay. I introduce ordinance number 0-2022-07-R. This is an ordinance amending Chapter 118, 
dogs in public parks. <clears throat> Have to read it. Read it. <laughs> um, whereas the borough desires to amend its ordinances on animal nuisances and dogs in public parks, now therefore be it ordained by mayor and council uh, of borough of Fanwood County of Union State of New Jersey as follows. Chapter 118, section 23 is hereby amended as follows. A. No person owning, keeping, or harboring any dog shall suffer or permit it to be upon the public streets or in any public place of the borough unless such dog is accompanied and controlled by a person reasonably calculated to have the strength and agility to exercise control over the dog's activities and is securely confined and controlled by an adequate leash not more than six feet long at all times. Seeing eye dogs shall be excused from the control set forth in the subsection when accompanied by their masters. B. Owners shall be limited to one dog for entry into public parks. C. Dogs shall not be permitted on the sports courts, skateboard area, sports rink, sports playing fields, or within the children's playground area within public parks. D. Dogs that are aggressive, bark excessively, or are a nuisance shall be removed from public parks. E. Owners shall remove all feces deposited by such animals and dispose of the same provided by section 118-22 of this chapter. F. Owners shall display its dog's current license as required by section 118-3 of this chapter upon request. G. Any dog having a documented incident of an attack or a bite of a person or repeated violations of this chapter shall be permanently prohibited from entry into the public parks. H. Violators of this section will be subject to a fine of not more than $250 for first offense and not more than $500 for subsequent offense. Be it further ordained, this amended chapter 118, section 23 shall take effect as provided by law. I move that this ordinance be adopted on first reading, and if adopted, that the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law, and that the second reading of said ordinance be held at a public hearing at Borough Hall, 75 North Martin Avenue on Kathleen. July 18th. July 18th at 7 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. May I have a second? Second. second. I have a second, please. May I have a roll call? President uh, Anthony Carter? Yes. Jim Banks? Yes. Eric McElroy Barker? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? No. Thank you. Moving on, um, next ordinance uh, under first reading, ordinance 20, 2022-08-R. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. And yeah, do I'm you just... want to just say, are you going to call it up and then you can sure. describe it? Sure. Okay. So I move ordinance 0-2022-08-R. This Ordinance enacting Chapter 150 of the Borough Code for Films and Motion Pictures. Um, describe Russ. it now, Russ, and then I'll move it. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the things that had come up recently is that people, uh, I guess, making requests of Borough Hall that they wanted to uh, do, do some filming around the borough. So I looked into it, and I saw that Vanwood did not have an ordinance that dealt with filming motion pictures within the boroughs. So there are some other towns around New Jersey that do have film, what we call film ordinances. So I kind of took it from there, but, um, and then tailored it for Famwood, uh, according to some comments and input from council members. So basically what this does is it creates a permitting scheme for people who wish to film motion pictures, again, for profit, and then over a certain budget amount they would just have to get a permit and fill out an application form, which we're working on. Um, um, it, it would be a very simple form to fill out um, to request and decide, you know, things like if you need it, you have to have insurance, if you need uh, any street closures or anything, things of that nature, it would be like a noticing requirement to the borough so we could understand and, you know, be able to accommodate uh, people who wanted to take motion picture films or digital films in within the borough. The ordinance accepts out student films, things of, a, of educational nature that do not have possess much of a budget at all. So right. those types of things would be Right. So, so this out. is addressing the fact that in the state of New Jersey, the film and television um, industry is booming. Um, with the tax credits that the state has pushed, um, we are seeing, uh, the state is seeing a tremendous influx. Cranford right now, Westfield, they're, they're really exploding with um, filming. So we want to be open for business. Um, we want to have our economy 
um, benefit from the economic benefits of hosting film and TV pictures here. Um, and this sort of sets out a very simple parameters so that we can keep track and make sure that there's no issues. So thank you for that. The other, the other ordinance just, if people up here, is just updates the uh, zoning permit fee schedule for the borough. So that's uh, amending. Right, we'll move it separately, more. but they're yeah. sort of joined just together. Just to make sure it's all consistent and it all works together. Thank you. Okay, so I move that um, O-2022-08-R 2022 r be adopted on a first reading and if adopted that the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law and that the second reading of said ordinance be held at a public hearing at Borough Hall 75 North 14 Avenue, Fanwood, New Jersey on July 18th, 2020 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. Second. May have a roll call, please. Anthony Carter? Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Dr. Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. And then there's the last okay. one is tied to right. the one we just and, talked uh, about. Right. Yeah. Our attorney just explained. I move O 2022 09 R, amending Chapter 184 of the Borough Code for Fees and Permits. I move that this ordinance be adopted on first reading, and if adopted, that the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law, and that the second reading of said ordinance be held at a public hearing at Borough Hall, 75 North Parking Avenue, Fanwood, New Jersey, on July 18th, 2022, at 7 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. Thank you. Roll call. Anthony Carter? Uh, Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Um, Patricia Walsh? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Thank you. Um, I now would like to have a motion to go out of order and move the uh, privilege of the floor by the public. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Now I'd like to call forward any members of the public that would like to make a comment by asking if you come up to the podium that you please state your name and address for the record. There is five minutes per speaker. There is no yielding of time and there's no coming back a second time. So with that, I would welcome anyone that wishes to come up. And again, just introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Can the cameras all hear me? Sorry. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Every dog has his name. It's just your name and oh, your name sorry. and address. Name That's and okay. They all know me. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn Briggs, 54 Helen Street. Thank you. Family. Um, every dog has their day. It looks like today is ours. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Awesome. I want to thank you, Neymar. I want to thank you, Councilman Barker. I want to thank you, Councilman Carter, all the council members, Trish Walsh, um, especially Russ, um, for your hard work and efforts to amend this ordinance, especially now as we enter the dog days of summer. We realize the previous administration is responsible for this law, not this group, and we really respect and appreciate that. And I'm sorry for the pressure we applied, but the summer's here, we want to be in the park. Um, so I think this ordinance, um, we can do this safely and responsibly. Um, we are a responsible community. We are not at odds with our neighbors. If anything, I believe this has really connected us as a community. Um, and our dogs are our family, not our, not our nuisances. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to come forward? <laughs> it's okay. okay. Your name and address. Just My name is Renee Feinberg. I live at Nine Midway in Fanwick, and I am in support of having dogs in our parks, and thank you for hearing me today. I never had a dog or even an interest in having a dog until my husband and I retired. Four years ago, we got a hobby puppy, Lola. She's the best decision we ever made. However, walking her can be stressful because we need to walk her along Midway Avenue in order to get to the quieter streets. The sidewalk along Midway is more like an asphalt path, which is narrow and it's overrun with uh, poison ivy right now, so it requires me to walk into the street. I fear for children that have to do this. Once I get to the quieter residential streets, I walk in the street and Lola walks along the curb of people's lawns. I always pick up after her, but I feel bad that she's stolen people's property. And as it is now, I have no place else to walk her. As a taxpayer, I'm disappointed that the town hasn't done anything to accommodate dog owners in public spaces. 
We have heard in the town meetings previously that we shouldn't compare Fanwood to other towns because we have different considerations. I'd be interested in hearing what makes us unique in this regard so that we could understand why it couldn't be done. For the last three years, my husband and I live our winter months in a gated community in Florida, and that has a dog park. We have found that our sense of community there is stronger than we had at Fanwood, and we've lived here for over 25 years. That's because we meet our neighbors at the dog park daily, and we've made friendships there. We love Fanwood, and we would love for this to be possible here. I think it's so important for people for their mental and physical health to have a sense of belonging in a neighborhood. And I think walking in a dog in a park would promote that. For those that are fearful of the safety of children, we are only asking to allow dogs on leash in designated areas. And we understand no dogs in playground areas or ball fields. For those that are concerned that dog owners will not be responsible enough to pick up after their dogs, then I say find them and find them heavily. We agree that that behavior is completely unacceptable. And I think you will find, as I have in our dog park in Florida, that dog owners are the best police of other dog owners that don't pick up. We want to protect our privileges and we also want a clean park. An additional advantage of walking dogs in parks would be that it would discourage the Canadian geese and possibly the deer who never pick up after their nuts. <laughs> when Lola visited my mother, who was in assisted living, I saw lonely older people with vacant looks on their faces suddenly light up and engage with her and become animated. Dogs can add so much, and I understand not all people love dogs. I want to respect their opinions and their rights, but I believe we can add so much to our community, and we can do this while respecting everyone. I would respectfully ask the members of the council who will be voting on this issue if they could tell us their position and why um, they have that position. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to come forward? Anybody else wish to come forward at this time? Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Samantha Momet. I live at 106 Chetwood Terrace in Fanwood. And if you give me a moment, I'd like to tell you a bit of a story. Now, I love dogs. I adore dogs from a very, very young age. They were my favorite thing. I would always beg my parents, can we get a dog? Can we get a dog? And they'd say no, and they'd give them all a reason. I'd nod and smile and hide, hide my hurt and make do with the, with the neighborhood dogs, petting whatever neighborhood dogs would let me, and abiding those owners who didn't want me to uh, to pet them for whatever reason. They were always very kind about vocalizing that for whatever reason their dog didn't want to pet or they didn't want it, uh, which I think is a nice thing to keep in mind. People, are, people tend to vocalize their pet's needs a lot more than you may expect. Uh, and I went off to college, and my parents decided to get a dog the moment that I left. <laughs> and so now I had a dog uh, with none of the benefits of being home for it. Uh, except now I'm home this summer, and I've gotten the chance to walk the dog, and I've gotten to see a lot of things around the neighborhood. Most notably, an incident comes to mind about a month back, when I was walking the dog at around the same time as a lot of kids got off from school. And two young kids, if I were to guess, in middle school, were walking down the way, and they asked if they could pet my dog. And she's very good around small children, so I went, yeah, sure, you can, go pet, you can pet my dog. And they, they went up, they, they lowered their hands for her to sniff, she sniffed it, jolted away at first, but let, let the kids pet her. She was wagging her tail, smiling, and the kids were smiling too. And I found that so too was I. This simple interaction had made all of our days all at once in a single fell swoop. I think allowing dogs in the park would do a very similar thing. Because certainly there will be those kids who are afraid of dogs, and I'm not going to discount that, but there's also going to be those who love them, those who stay will be made by seeing a dog, getting to a friendly dog, watching dogs wrestle in front of the park. I was that kid. Those elementary schools, these those elementary school children were those kids. And I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind as well, is that for all that this may have its handful of negatives, it will have its positives as well. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anybody else wish to come forward? Yes. My name is Gabrielle Puglisi and I live at 162 Belvedere Avenue. As I said, I'm Gabby Puglisi and I'm currently a senior at the Scotch Plains Fairwood High School. I spoke at the last meeting and I just wanted to reiterate some points from last time. In the grand scheme of things, there are a lot of other things that this meeting could be occupying their time with, as this should be an easy decision because the pros outweigh the cons in every aspect of this situation. If there are doubts or fears about allowing dogs in the park, we should be voicing those issues to the dog community, and we can all help come up with solutions because we all want this. The dogs are part of our community. They are part of our personal families as well as our Fanwood families. To keep them out of the park is unfair to the families and the dogs. It's time to have to take my dog Penny in the car to take her to the park rather than just walking her down the road three blocks because I live super close to the Grand. If other towns can do it, including our sister town, Scotch Plains, then so can we. My mom has a list of dogs and owners in her phone, new friends that we have made through Penny since we got her last year. Some of the friends are here with us today to tell you the same things as me. The parks are a key piece of bringing people together in the community, just as having dogs are. Both spread love and joy, as well as prosper new friendships and fanwood, which everyone could use more, especially after COVID. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you choose to vote and vote in favor of the dogs. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Lewis, 41 Beach Avenue in Fanwood. I want to make it very clear I have nothing against dogs in the park. Uh, however, I am a little bit surprised based on past discussions of this ordinance that it isn't accompanied by a provision that allows the sunset or a re review after a set period of time to see how implementation has evolved over time. Uh, secondly, um, I actually agree with some of the points uh, uh, made by Ms. Walsh with regards to dogs in the park very crowded periods of time. As a dog owner and past myself, I know that my own dog got spooked on many occasions when she was surrounded by a crowd. Uh, you may think that uh, uh, that um, uh, the dog, it, you're covering it by saying that uh, uh, if the dog is rambunctious or whatever, that the dog would be removed from the park. The better solution would be to put a time limit on it and keep the dog out during such events as fan jam or other events that would involve a large crowd, movies in the park, for example. The simplest solution in my, mind, my own mind would once again be to allow dogs in the park up to a set period of time, say 11 o'clock or noon in the morning, when the, when the parks are less crowded, and then they're, everybody's happy. But again, a personal opinion. And I do suggest that you put a, a period of time to allow a review on this, uh, as, if you're going to implement this at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Anybody else wishes to come forward? Hello, my name is Sebastian D'Elia. I reside at 36 Shady Lane in Fanwood with what my wife Nellie, my son Anthony, and my dog son Diego. As someone who worked in government for 27 years and frequently fielded complaints, I know that public life can be a thankless job. And you generally hear from constituents only when they have an issue that they're unhappy about. So first, I wish to thank you all for the great job that you do in keeping Fanwood a great place to live in. Um, that has to be said there. I'm um, here tonight, of course, to speak on the ordinance amending Chapter 118, Dogs in the Public Parks Administration Finance, uh, spot, sponsored by Councilwoman uh, McElroy Parker. First, I'd like to thank the Councilwoman for, for moving this measure and supporting the modernization of this ordinance to allow dogs in our parks. Also, thank you, Mayor Mark, for your leadership in bringing this item to a vote. I would be remiss if I also didn't thank Karen Dale Brink for her nonstop activism in bringing this matter to the front. <laughs> She's tireless, relentless, and a true fighter who did this all at her own expense in addition to running her own business. Change can only happen with a citizen's movement behind it, and frequently that citizen's movement has one great person behind it, and that's Carolyn. Um, I'd like to give all three women I mentioned a round of applause and applause. <laughs> <laughs>
No more dog puns. Uh, but we're somewhat disappointed it took so long to get a vote. We are very grateful and thankful that um, this night has come. And uh, we do acknowledge that the ban goes back some 20 years, and it wasn't put into place by anybody currently here. It's an anachronistic measure. It's not what the family is today. You look around a town, and you'll see major businesses that cater to pets. Um, as as said, was stated by uh, many of the other eloquent speakers, dogs are not allowed in, this, in the borough parks. And we're one of two of Union County's 21 towns in the U.S. The county also allows dogs in their parks. On top of the dogs, uh, the parks ban, we also have to pay a license fee for dogs. And uh, we are fine if we don't renew one. I don't agree with that, but that's always another discussion we can have. Um, so we pay tax on that, but we also have to walk our dogs on the streets, which has been mentioned by some people. And a lot of our streets, especially where I live, don't have sidewalks. And it's very dangerous to do that. We're ducking vehicular traffic for our pets. So we have to go out of town to find a safe haven. I'm going to have to tell you that's really fair to dog owners. And there's lots of us, and, they, and we do vote. Animals can become the third rail of politics, especially, especially in a small town like this. Uh, tonight, you've begun the process of changing uh, this ordinance. We really appreciate that. Um, I thank you all, even the one person that voted against it. I hope you change your mind about that. <laughs> you have time. Uh, and thank you again. Remember that, you know, dog owners, pet owners, we're all the bedrock for this community. We pay taxes. We're law abiding. We love this town. This is a great town. Because of your efforts, because of our efforts, we can work as a team. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Elon. I live at 135 Coriel Ave. Um, I'm here to talk on behalf of my dog, Shoko. I want to first say, again, thank you to the council for having, you know, having us here and having us talk and listening to us. I want to say thank you to you know, some of you who have expressed concern. I think it's really important for you know, our community to understand, well, what are you afraid of? What's the concern so we can know how to manage that? I also want to say that for some of those who might not have dogs, a dog is a member of your family. So me, my dog is my child. I treat her as such. I love her as such. So I, want, I think that may help explain why so many people are passionate about this is because it's a member of our family. It's so important to us. I want to re-emphasize the point about safety because I think it's really, really important. I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to also talk about like, why I think this is also more globally important for our community. So the safety is such a big point because exactly as I said, we don't, have, we don't necessarily have sidewalks. And even when we do have sidewalks, some people aren't very comfortable having two dogs in the same space. Maybe there's children on the sidewalk. You want to move to the, 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 the middle of the street. And the streets, you know, if you look at Hallam, you know, for instance, a lot of people walk on that street every single day, it gets busy. And so it's just, it's just a matter of safety. You know, we don't, we don't want to run into a situation when we get hit by a car. You know, that's, it would be completely tragic. So I really, really hope we can avoid that by having the dogs in the park. I know to you guys, it's a small issue. And, but to us, it's a huge, it's a huge thing for us. And I think that sometimes even these small issues can have a huge impact on how we perceive our community and how we move forward together. So um, with that being said, um, I really think it's a matter of what kind of town we want to be. I think this deciding on this is really making a decision on what kind of town we want to be. Um, the, we have kind of like two situations. Either you have, you either say no, right? And you, you, you say no, we don't want any change. We like the things as the way they are. And, or you say, yes, how can we make it work? I want you to think, what breeds better community? Is it the no, or is it the yes? What can we do to make it work? So I think that's also important to think of. I want to talk a little bit about an example. Um, and I can speak for myself and many others, um, especially those people who recently moved to Fanwood or recently adopted or rescued an, uh, a dog. Um, the, maybe we missed the sign for the, for the ordinance, right? And we went into the park, and we did find out for reading the signs that there was an ordinance in the park, we found out because someone was yelling at us about in the park. Someone was threatening the police, threatening to call the police. And that's just such an uncomfortable situation to be in. It's an unsafe situation to be in. And I, I don't think that really breeds community. Um, additionally, my dog, um, we have her trained as a service animal. She's our service animal. So I could 
technically bring her to the park. She serves a disability. But I'm not going to because I'm scared that I'm going to get berated when I go to the park. And that's, this, that's kind of what the ordinance has caused, this division in our community. And although it has rallied a lot of people together, but it's caused a division in our community that's, in, that's based on like antagonizing each other and hating each other. And I don't think that's, very, that's what we want to be. So I reiterate, what kind of town do we want to be? One that jumps at opportunities to cost each other, call the police on each other, or one that promotes community and belonging. I think lifting the ordinance and coming with a solution for everyone will really help people come to an understanding and bring us together. So I thank you for your time. Um, I hope you guys make the right decision. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carrie Morris, 405 South Avenue. Five minutes. Five minutes? Really? I have no phone with Gary. He's got to wake up. Start the clock. Gary comes to all the meetings. <laughs> all the meetings. First of all, the fact yesterday was Father's Day, I just think it's really cool that somebody named Barker introduced this bill. I think that, <laughs> that's, that's my, my married dad name. joke for the day. That's my married name. Not, not that counts. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a last name, Morris, so I'm here to talk about cats. No. Um, I, I wanted to ask a question about the, the uh, one of the things is the sign in the park actually says no pets, which is there a law against bringing a goldfish to that park? <laughs> Seriously, it's kind of weird. Like, why does it say no pets? I'm going to go back 20 some odd years ago. They put the sign up based on the ordinance that's currently in place when it really meant dogs. I have a goldfish and, at home that's just itching to get into the park right now, and I just, I just want. I think you'd be on solid fish. ground to put her in a little bag and All right. Her. All right. I just don't want to get harassed or anything like that. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to point out. Um, we're putting in a lot of apartment buildings in town. One of them, the, the Soho, 58 units. They actually have a dog wash room for the tenants there. The back is just a little postage stamp of AstroTurf for the dogs. Okay, that's just, what do you need a dog wash place for if the dogs can't go to the park? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Let the dogs roam around and walk. One of the things that's really cool about dogs I had the opportunity to um, take one of my dogs to the Puppy Palooza. Um, yes, over the weekend. Yes, my I goodness. I, I never felt more popular in my life. And it's because of my dog, right? And that, that's what opens up social interaction with people and neighbors and everything like that. My wife knows most of our neighbors, not by their name, but by the name of their dogs. Like, oh, that's Gino's father. It's really, it's really kind of cool. And, um, which I don't think he really is his father, I'm just saying, I just wanted, I want that on record. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a way to really meet your neighbor, and I think we can, we can you know, list the, 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 the businesses in town, Duke's Pet Den, Canine Resorts, Fanwood Animal Hospital, and Sheelan's Bistro Wolf Menu is uh, just a name of a few of the businesses in town. And, you know, we're going to have this, these 58 apartments, them walking right through downtown. We want it to be walkable. Um, as a member of the green team, walking's a good thing. It's uh, one less car on the road. It's, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, and one more small thing. I did not hear anything in the, um, the ordinance about the poop situation that I brought up the last time. We're not touching that tonight. It's, it's I love that answer. <laughs> In another session. Yeah, so, yes. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not without a bag. Yeah. Like, you're not going to touch it. We're good. Okay. All right. Well, and I just wanted to let you know that the, the cat thing, there's actually the same type thing regarding the cat, so that needs to be adjusted as well. Okay. All right? Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Kathy Momet, 106 Chetwood Terrace. I just want to start saying that by saying that I am the mother who told her child that she couldn't have a dog. And then when she went away to college, we got one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> um, you know, 
being a dog owner, I, I just want to say I really don't think that we're asking for a lot. We're not asking for a dog park. We're not even asking for a designated dog area. We're really just asking for the right to walk with our dogs in the park without being harassed by anyone. And I really don't think that's a lot to ask. And we know that most of the towns around us, they allow dogs in the park. And as far as I know, I haven't heard of any reports of anarchy or mayhem or carnage that's happened in those parks. I mean, if, from the people I know who live in other towns, it's really been a very positive experience to have dogs in the park. Now, I know changing an ordinance is really like making any other change in life. You really can't predict what the ultimate outcome is going to be. But if you want to move forward, you have to take that step and take that chance, and you see what happens. And I think that's really what we have to do. I really think that it's time that we really take that chance and give and reflect the changing environment in the community in Fanwood and try to um, let our dogs in the park and, and see what happens. The interesting thing about change is that change is not, it's not there forever. If it doesn't work out, change happens upon change. And I think we should just give our dogs a chance and be allowed to walk with them in the park. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Larry Cohen, 24 McLennan Place. I just wanted to reiterate for the public a couple of things that I'd written to you guys about. Um, I didn't hear back from you, but they were issues that had been brought up at, at this meeting that I tried to research and, and hopefully um, put to rest. One was the width of the pathways in the parks. You know, I discovered that those are about twice as wide as the width of most of the sidewalks in town. So that should be a benefit rather than a hindrance. Um, it's been mentioned already, but there's talk that this is a very walkable town. And if you look at the number of streets that actually have sidewalks, it's really closer to 40% in town. Um, in my quadrant, where I live, it's closer to 25% that actually have sidewalks. So the issue that people have, been, have brought up already about uh, difficulties walking their dogs safely, I think is a valid one. And really the most important one was, I think, um, it was expressed that, you know, we are a unique community with unique parks that are unlike anybody else's in the county. And after doing some research, I have to disagree. You know, there are three towns with very similar populations to ours. Kenilworth, Mountainside, and Garwood. Um, I believe Mountainside is even smaller than us. And they have parks that are of similar size to ours. They're basically a quarter mile um, in circumference. And I was in all three of those towns, and I walked all of those parks. Garwood in particular, their pathway runs right through the playground. Um, and, you know, it goes around the entire park. Kenilworth and Mountainside are somewhat different, but the sizes are similar. And in all three towns, I sought out and spoke to public officials. Whether it be maintenance people, uh, Garwood, it was, a it was the business administrator. Um, and I asked them point blank, I said, you have problems. Are there complaints? Um, do people, you know, not pick up after their dogs? And none of these people could tell me that they had any um, problems, any severe problems. So I think it's been proven that it can work. It can not only just in other towns, but in other towns like Fanwood. And uh, I applaud you for taking this step, and I hope that you'll you'll follow through and give this a try. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Melissa Louisiana, I'm on 162 Avenue. And I know there's been a lot about the dog park situation, and I realized that when we're walking a lot, you like see the dogs and they'll like be playing on the sidewalks and stuff. I feel that our street is literally a dog hole. We have like 10 dogs playing at once, like in our front yard. And I think that if we were to be able to go to the parks, there would be a lot more room for the dogs to play. It would be much safer the dogs running through the street. And we would also have a lot like of space so that 
people that don't like dogs as much can just go to a separate area. As you said, they're not allowed by tennis courts or like the playground area for certain reasons, and I completely understand that. That's why I think it would be very good for dogs to be on the grass, and that it would just be much easier that dogs have to risk basically their lives by having to play in front of backyards that some are fenced in, some aren't. But dogs can still get out to run to the streets, and they also could still get out like anywhere. But when at the park, there are a lot of fences in places, and I feel that if there are dogs, even if they are on leash, they can still play in a bigger space without having the risk of their lives. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to come forward at this time? Yes. Uh, your shirt. Okay. My name is Leon Byerson. I'm 68 in South Africa. And when I got my dog four years ago, I was quite surprised that I wasn't allowed to take it to the park. The Grand Park is like right behind my house. And we go there and I've complied with it. A few hundred times probably at this point, I won't completely around the Grand Park, but stay out of it. But it would be nice to be able to take her in there. And I've always enjoyed meeting other people with their dogs out and about on the sidewalks. But I'm very aware too that if you go a few blocks away, you start to lose the sidewalks on one of our streets. And I've always hesitated because I've always thought I don't want her getting used to the idea that it's okay to walk on the street, not on the sidewalks. I think I would just encourage her if she ever gets loose on her own to do something like that. It's just not very safe. And meeting people has been a tremendous benefit of having the dog out. The park would be a great place to do that. I'm lucky my street is on the one side, so it's just a little, I was like, well, here, I want our own one extended driveway for about half a dozen houses. I kind of know a lot of the other people just from having the dog. It's so great for the sense of community to have a dog. Just feedback. And the neighborhood children love to pet the dog. And you really shouldn't be teaching the kids that we want to discriminate against the dogs in some way. Dogs are a great benefit to everybody. And I'm really grateful to the council for giving this time and attention. And I hope that you guys are going to go through with making the change that we want here. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to come forward before we close this portion to the public? Seeing that there isn't anyone that wishes to come forward, I have a motion to close the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So thank you for those who are here. Um, I think our next step, as you know, this is one of three first readings of ordinances, and so the actual public hearing, <laughs> which we kind of have here, but the public hearing second reading and vote will be at our next council meeting. So thank you very much. All right, moving on for the rest of our agenda. We have a consent agenda items, um, which we will read by uh, title, and I will ask... Uh, I guess we have administration and finance, and then we have uh, one, I guess, one last public safety. So if you want to just read the title, please. Sure. Um, by consent agenda, we are moving resolution 2022-06-107, authorizing the tax report for May 2022. Maybe we'll give it a minute. Yeah, we'll just give it a minute so while people can leave, that would be fine. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We'll just take a two-second break while our clerk rushes to get contact there, information. There weren't any comments on Facebook. There were a couple people watching that were in Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll just continue. Let's give it another second while our mass media dissembles. Uh, she's wondering who it was. Uh, just, it was
That's what I heard. Okay. Are we waiting for Kathleen? We have no, to. No, we can, we can uh, start. Because these are just consent. I'm yeah. just reading. Okay. So, yeah, so we'll start again. Again, under consent agenda, we are moving 2020. Antonius, <laughs> you ready? Okay. Uh, 2022 06 107, authorizing the tax report for May 2022. 2022 06 108, authorizing payment of claims for June 2022. 2022 06 109, authorizing the renewal of liquor license 2005 43 004 013 Carano Square LLC for the 2022 23 license year. 06 110, authorizing the renewal of liquor license. 2005-33-004-13 Sheelands Crossing for the 22-23 license year. 06-111 authorizing the renewal of liquor license. 2005-44-001-005 at South Avenue Liquors for the 22-23 license year. 06-112 approving a senior coordinator stipend retroactive to January 1st, 2022 in the amount of $4,000. 06-113, authorizing the renewal of a shared services agreement with the Borough of Fanwood and the City of Rahway for construction code official, building subcode official, and fire protection subcode official services for a period of two years in the amount of $66,000 annually. 06-114, authorizing the Borough to submit a grant application for the New Jersey Department of Human Services Division of Mental Health and Addiction Services, DMHAS grant, funding for the Fanwood Municipal Alliance for one year grant term July first 22 through march 14 23 in the amount of three thousand six hundred and forty six dollars zero six dash one fifteen authorizing the borough to sell borough property station stationary desk phones at an auction zero six dash one sixteen authorizing an increase in contract to shane safe shane schaefer for an additional six thousand dollars for tax appeal attorney services and the last one's yours and zero oops, sorry 06117, authorizing the step increase to Timothy Green to patrol the knee, effective June 13th, 2022. Okay, thank you. So, do we have a motion of a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can we do a roll call for any of the Yeah, we should do a roll call for the uh, Carter? Uh, Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Um, Aaron Roy Barker? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. Okay, moving on under mm -hmm. resolutions. Um, we have several resolutions which we'll be acting on tonight. Um, Councilwoman Roy Barker? Yeah. Uh, I move 2022 06 118, authorizing the mayor and municipal clerk to execute an agreement with the County of Union. You see the language is repetitive there, I'm going to scratch that out. With the County of Union to modify the cooperative agreement dated June 2014 as amended 2017 CDBG. This is an application for a grant. The language is it's, it's repeated. You is this a grant or is this what is this? With the County of Union. What is this? Um, I just want to, hold on, let me just get here. Trish, did, did Trish want to tell us about number? Uh, 118. 118. Did you get the second? Who seconded that? Nobody yet. Nobody yet. Uh, nobody yet. Okay. Hold on a sec. Oh, this is basically just adopting the resolution as an annual shared service agreement to cover the fiscal year 22-23 with the county and, um, and HUD. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, do I have a motion on that? So moved. And a second, me. Uh, second. Roll call, please. Anthony Carter. Jeffrey Banks. Yes. Aaron Montroy Parker. Yes. Captain Mitchell. Yes. Patricia Walsh. Yes. Okay, thank you. Next. I move 2022 06 119, approving submission of a grant application and to execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation and JTOT. For the 23 road program of 2nd Street, South Avenue to the Grand Avenue, Robin Road, and Pandit Court Project. Second. Yes, um, roll call. Anthony Carter. Jeffrey Banks. Yes. <laughs> Aaron McElroy Barker. Yes. Catherine Mitchell. Yes. Patricia Walsh. Yes. Affirm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
I move 2022-06-120, deferring the regional district school taxes. I need a second. second. Um, I, so let's just uh, have an explanation, please. Oh, okay, yeah. so the school taxes are levied on a fiscal year, so their year ends schools on 6:30, and which there are tax levy um, is a calendar year, so our year ends on 12:31. Um, so the borough is levying the following six months worth of taxes in advance. Yeah, we're on a calendar year, right. January so, so to December 31st. They never line up. They're on a June 30th to July 1st. So those six months never line up. So what this resolution does is lets us advance that deferred school tax. Gotcha. Okay. Do we have a second? Yes, I yes. second. Trish, okay. Um, Anthony Carter. Of, uh, Jeffrey Banks. Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker. Yes. Catherine Mitchell. Yes. Patricia Walsh. Yes. And with 2022-06-121, authorizing the borough to enter into an amended agreement with Bayshore Recycling Corporation for the borough recycling pickup and for a three-year term commencing July 1, 22 through July 30th, 2025. Okay. So, this is not new. No, Bayshore's. This no, the one we're using the right now. Oh, I just I got it. The receivers. No, they've been it's the receiving our stuff. We're so we're just in the contract. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, it's a deal too, right? It's, it's less. It is. It's less. Oh, good. Second. Yes. It's less. Second. It's about ten dollars. Has a decrease in the tipping fees? Yes. Per per. Okay. Less money. All right, so we just need to vote on that. Yep. Anthony Carter? Okay. Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Parker? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. I move 2022-06-122, authorizing the road to enter into an agreement with the Health Insurance and Health Program Consultant with New Jersey Community Solutions, LLC, for a fee not to exceed $15,000. And as I discussed with Trish Delardo, this is to give us the option of exploring alternative health insurance plans for our employees outside of the state plan that we currently have if that were to be a better solution for us second anthony carter Affirm. jeffrey banks yes aaron mcboy barker yes Catherine mitchell yes Patricia Bush. yes I move this real quick. I should yeah. that we haven't done a grant that is here to talk a little bit about the next um, the next one yes okay so if you want to move it and then we'll i'll move him. it and then you're on uh, I move 2022-06-123, publicly accepting donated funds on behalf of the borough of Fanwood Police Department in the amount of $10,000. So, we'll talk to Sure. Good evening, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so Fanwood PD was fortunate enough to come into contact with a Dr. Cesar DePaco. He's the founder and owner of uh, Summit Nutritionals International. It's a giant company based up in, uh, in Summit. Uh, police Director Michael Bramhall met Dr. DePaco through a mutual friend who was a Hillsborough police officer. Um, they discuss, the, the discussion got into how municipal budgets around the state and around the country are, um, are, are, are tight, and Dr. DePaco immediately offered us a $10,000 donation, as he does with uh, departments throughout New Jersey. If you go to their website, some nutritionals go around their philanthropy um, media outreach part of the site. Uh, he gives money to departments that need, you know, specialized equipment and stuff like that. Um, using this money, we decided to purchase new AEDs, uh, defibrillators, for medical calls. Uh, our current AEDs are coming up on their life expectancy, and they're super expensive. Um, obviously, we use them uh, enough to warrant needing new AEDs uh, when they're about to hit their life expectancy. Uh, we also decided to equip our officers with outer vest carriers, uh, which basically... Um, it's a bulletproof vest that goes on the outside of your uniform, and we can put various equipment on the vest as opposed to our duty belts. Uh, multiple studies show that having equipment put on your chest instead of your belt reduces leg pain, hip pain, lower back pain, and that's something that, as you hit your 40s and 50s, so I've heard, uh, becomes, <laughs> becomes a problem. I wouldn't know. I just get younger every day. Um, so, you know, these vests will increase the overall health and wellness of our officers without sacrificing safety. Um, and the doctor will be coming to Fanwood PD to do a tour and to do a meet and greet uh, when he gets back from a, his vacation. Um, we thank him and Summit Nutritionals for the generosity and philanthropy. Yeah, let us know when that happens. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're thinking um, mid-July. Okay. Uh, 
Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Councilman Carter? No, just, I think just a second. Oh, we just need a second. Oh, second. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're good. Appreciate a second. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Anthony Carter? No problem. Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Parker? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. I move 2022-06-124, authorizing the borough to award a contract with an architect to prepare a feasibility study for the new Fanwood Public Works <coughs> and Recycling Center for a fee not to exceed $19,000. And I just want to make this clear. I think we, um, we amended the yeah, resolution. Do you want to just explain that? Because the uh, it's really an extension of an existing contract that we have. Yeah, so the, it just amends an existing contract with the uh, Septembrino architects yes. um, who have been um, hired or contracted to um, work on the new public works facility. Down the, on, so. Thank you. Thank you. Did we have second. a second? We have a second. We have a roll call. Carter. Uh -huh. Jeffrey Bates. Yes. Kathy Mitchell. Yes. Aaron yes. yes. I move 2022-06-125, authorizing a catering permit to Sheelands Crossing for Fan Jam on Sunday, July 10th, from 11 to 7. Second. Yeah, so this is, um, I guess it's maybe our fourth annual Fan Jam in the Grand Park, which is the all day music and food festival. Um, and this is Shillings Crossing. We'll be able to, um, it's the 10th, right? Yeah, okay, okay, Saturday, July 10th, um, for the purpose of uh, being able to sell beer and wine, um, which we have cornered off with police and checking IDs. Second. You have a second? Just you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Next. As far as I understand, we are skipping 06 126, correct? Because we are moving the budget tonight. Oh, yeah. Trish? No, I think that's already been taken out. Oh, that's off. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's off. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It's in an old copy for me. Yes. I apologize. No okay. I move 22, uh, 2022-06 127. No, so, so I think you're working off of it. So they yeah. deleted this here. Right. Move that. Hello, where am I? 126. No, it's the same thing. That's the one I. No, no they changed the number. I apologize. Okay. 2022 06 126, ratifying the award of an emergency contract to Denbar Construction Incorporated for roadway repairs on Robin Road pursuant to NJSA 40A 11 6. Okay, Anthony Carter? Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Captain Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. And I move 2022 06 127, canceling unexpended balances of the sewer utility fund. Anthony Carter? Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Captain Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm just getting my axe yes. together here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Wait, can I get this paper here? You ready? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, so, so next we have, um, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of switching gotcha. gears here. Um, next we have um, two. Two actions on our budget for 2022. One will be a public hearing on the 22 budget, um, and then there will be a authorizing an amendment. So the amendment comes second, not first. Right. So someone should make a motion to open. So I move to open 2022-06-128, um, the uh, calendar year 2022 budget uh, open for public hearing. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At this point, I wish to welcome any members of the public that wish to make a comment on the 2022 budget. A name for the record, please. Michael Lewis, 41 Beach Avenue in Fanwood. Could somebody please explain uh, the, the 
the average assessed value of a fat one home is four hundred and study four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. What the breakdown is going to be in terms of the increment pertaining to the municipal budget, sure. the school levy, and the county. Sure, percentage wise and dollar wise, I'm assuming. Both. Okay. So it's the, yeah, you want to do that? Sure. So the county budget, well, the four hundred dollars, right? Right. So start with the uh, the four hundred eighty-three thousand dollars is the average uh, assessed value of the home. So there are somewhere in there. So there are more that will sell for higher, and the other half will sell for less. So that is the the average. The, the average. Right. The average sale price. Mm -hmm. um, so the county um, tax this year it is not a certified number at the moment for the county. They wait to certify their number until the state passes their budget. But the number that we have right now is that it will go down. There. 2,000, right? Oh, sorry. But I was going to give the county's oh. numbers. So okay. Um, it's going to go down $63.91. Um, but 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 at, state what the number is. So it's so it's two thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars. Is for, is the count? Yes, it's the county's portion. Yes. Right. So so that's the first portion, right? And the county's portion of that um, makes about uh, almost seventeen point five percent of the total. Right. And let's do the schools. Okay, so the school the, the school portion of the tax for. For the borough resident would be eight thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars and thirty three cents. Which represents a little over sixty two percent of the budget. And that leaves us. So and then Fanwood we would be uh, two thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars and forty five cents. Which represents eighteen percent. Okay, for the average family would all yes. Yes. <coughs> So that total number is 13,552. If you add up all of the three portions that make up the average tax bill, okay. it's 13,552, of which schools are 8,452. Um, County is 2,365, and municipal is 2,554. And how does that compare with last year, if I may? Sure. So the the schools are an increase of ninety three dollars. The municipal is an increase of one twenty six, and the county is a decrease of sixty three. That's what I'm trying to pin down. Thank you. Um, also, in the advertisement that you had in the Scotch Plains Times, uh, I noted that the count went down from eighty six to seventy four. Can you detail a little bit about how it managed that? Well, we had a great deal of police officers retire um, in the last two years. Um, we had our, our CFO retired, and we, and we didn't replace him. Um, I can't think of everybody else. Um, the court administrator also retired, and we had, at one point, had two people who did part the job and only got the one person. Um, yeah, I don't think we fully replaced everybody so, at Public right. Works. So we've, we've had a little shift in personnel. We didn't always replace with a full-time person. Uh, we've also replaced with a, a part-time person. Um, but this so incorporates both full-time and part-time. Sometimes we would have two part-times in the and they, they only have one part-time. We didn't always replace like for like. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward and make a comment about the municipal budget? Seeing that there isn't any, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public on the budget? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. So we have to move an amendment, Wait, right? Before we adopt the whole budget. I was going to move to amend the budget. Yeah. So uh, I move 2022 06 129, authorizing an amendment to the budget. Second. And this is in our packet. Um, you want to just describe what the amendment I, is? I can. So this is um, in sewer, sewer budget, the utility, and the state did not approve uh, us using the surplus in the budget. So in, what we ended up doing was reducing the surplus out of the budget and increasing the um, rents we received to make up the difference. Fair enough. Minor, right, in the scope it, of things. It doesn't change any of the numbers. Right. It doesn't change the billing. No, it changes right. nothing. 
Okay. So can I have a, uh, I have a motion? I have a second. And you, and you have a second? Uh, may I have a roll call? Yes. Anthony Carter? Uh -huh. Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Catherine Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. Thank you. And we have to go back and conclude the budget. Yes. Yeah, so now I move um, the calendar year 2022 budget for approval. Second. May I have a roll call, please? Anthony Carter? Uh -huh. Jeffrey Banks? Yes. Aaron McElroy Barker? Yes. Kathy Mitchell? Yes. Patricia Walsh? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, we'll make this. Yeah, and quick, if anybody has any reports that they want to do, then we'll, go, we'll open the meeting to the public, because I know we have some uh, some members of the public here. So... Uh, I can make a motion to open the meeting to the public. Okay. Is that nobody had to give reports? Yeah, but we'll do reports, and then we'll do that, because they have some things to report out, and then we'll do that. Sorry. Um, so, Aaron McLeod Barker? So you have what we've done in math. Um, so the only thing I want to add, just as a representative of TRHT, is that uh, the Juneteenth celebration was this past Saturday. Um, and and it, it really goes, I mean, it really needs to be reiterated that the, the amount of um, effort, emotional, uh, mental, physical effort that goes into planning that event is, is really extraordinary. And, and I really do hope as a community, as a small community, as a larger community, that we can move to embrace this day in a bigger way in the oncoming years so we can all really appreciate the work that goes into that event um, because it is a very important day to our whole community. And so um, so I do hope that people start to take more of an interest and start to get more involved and maybe participate in the coming years. So that's all I wanted to say about that. And then I have the captain's report, which is the um, rescue squad. Um, so uh, there were 40 calls in the month of May. They always report a, a month behind on most of those calls, sick calls that went to um, Overlook primarily. Um, and 10 required oxygen. Only 7.5% of calls um, did not have sufficient crew um, to, to fulfill. Um, so most of those... Don't know how to shut oh, that's me. Yeah, no, I, so didn't, I didn't. I don't know how to uh, shut it off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to shut it off. That's okay. So um, those calls basically mostly were falls, respiratory, cardiac events, and um, people who were ill. Um, most were transported to Overlook. Uh, there were four mutual aid calls with Scotch Plains, and as I said, only 7.5 percent of calls did have insufficient crew. Um, so that is, um, uh, that's great. Um, and I think that's uh, pretty much um, what I need to say, other than they, uh, the Rescue Squad will be at National Night Out on August 8th. Um, thank you. Moving on, uh, Patricia Walsh, uh, under Public Safety. Thank you. And this is the May 2022 monthly summary from um, our Police Director, Michael Bramble. So the department handled 1,021 calls for service in the month of May, about an average of 33 per day. This included 163 traffic enforcement details, 280 early <coughs> security checks. The officers conducted 83 park and walk details and responded to 57 medical calls, 35 fire or burglar alarms. During the month of May, 140 vehicles were stopped for traffic violations resulting in a total of 60 summonses being issued, 58 for moving violations, two for parking. Um, and then I just really wanted to highlight um, a few things that the Family Police Department has been doing um, over the past few months. Um, they participated in the National Click It or Ticket Campaign from May 23rd. That will go to June 5th. 58 vehicles were stopped, 27 summonses were issued. Two Family Police Police officers received training in pedestrian safety, and a pedestrian crosswalk enforcement detail will be held on June 28th. Um, several officers assisted Kathleen Holmes at the annual senior picnic on June 13th. Uh, family officers participated in the Social Justice Matters Juneteenth celebration at Shady Rest. The family officers are continuing to work with the Scotch Plains uh, Police Department and Scotch Plains Family School District on matters of mutual concerns. Um, they they helped out with the um, senior car parade. 
Uh, they were they are talking with the school board um, about graduation and things that they might be working on with that. Um, and we had the Memorial Day Parade, which the officers were at um, a sign unveiling on Patterson Road. Um, we had some safety car, um, I guess you would say, assembly type things for the high school where the police officers went. They certainly will be at Fan Jam. August 2nd is National Night Out. And we had several officers attend different training classes during the month of May. And there were four adult arrests during the month of May. So thank you, Lieutenant Krantz, for coming this evening and for the department's help on all of these activities. Um, Mayor, I did forget one thing since I'm, uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to forget to welcome um, the rescue squad did welcome three new members. So uh, welcome to Elizabeth Pakridi, Samantha Hagopian, and Carolyn Joe. So thank you very much for your um, time and, and your, your work. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Moving on, Public Works, Councilman Mitchell. Um, let me see. First of all, the Public uh, Works um, report as submitted by and, um, and because they, their usual, um, what they do every month, they got ready for the um, parade, which um, they spruce up the town with all kinds of flowers and bunting and um, painting and um, so we're very thankful for that. They also did a lot of prune, tree pruning uh, here during the last month. Um, of course, now they're very busy with cutting grass and, and um, mowing uh, and dragging the baseball fields three times a week. Uh, let me see what else. They, of course, were at the uh, senior picnic also. Um, they were guests because uh, they set up the, the um, meeting hall for every meeting. So they were thanked by being invited to the senior picnic. Um, let me see, what else? Oh, they did some painting in the various parks. Uh, the, the indoor painting of the restrooms at Le Grand, and they also did some fix some potholes on Woodland, Pendick, North and Hatfield, and no, the north and south side of the train station parking lots. And let me see, the recycling center will be open on July 9th, and here again, it's uh, self-service. And I think by now, you figured out that um, our uh, recycling schedule has changed. Um, we are recycling, they are picking up the recycling now on Wednesdays. Um, they are doing the north side on one week and the south side on the second week. So the next pickup will be June 29th for the north side of town and July 6th for the <coughs> southern, uh, south side of town. And I think that uh, kind of is the report for public works. Just, as I mentioned, the seniors, our last meeting was last week, and we had a, um, a barbecue for the seniors, a picnic, and um, I'd say, I don't know, Kathleen, how many, about 80, 80 seniors showed up? Yeah. Okay. Um, most really of great. them were people from the senior club, and some of the seniors who hadn't been to the club for various reasons throughout the um, year that we've been open. And of course, I said we um, also invited uh, our public works employees. Some of the police who were on duty were also our guests. And uh, a fine job was done by Kathleen, our, our coordinator. Um, the green team met this past, uh, two, I guess, two weeks ago. And most of their um, discussion was on our sustainable New Jersey application. Uh, I think they have spoken to you about it, Mayor. Um, as I said at our last meeting, we are standing as bronze, but they think we can achieve silver. So awesome. God bless them. And <laughs> No, I'm very serious. Yeah. If, if we kind of change uh, things over, um, it's, a, it's a feather in their cap and our cap yeah. for, for a family. And also, um, we passed a resolution before regarding CDBG. We don't usually talk about that. 
but um, they're out with their final numbers, and Fanwood is to, um, has been granted uh, 38,000. Um, and what was that specifically for? About I, don't I don't know. You're, you, it's, it's the only application. For facilities, for facilities or for uh, public improvements? Okay. I think it's for the handicap ramps. There's about 20 or 30 handicap ramps in town okay. that are not compliant. So well, the final number came in, and, and we were granted 38000 toward that project. Thank you. I had a quick question about Lagrange. Yeah. So they took down, I think, about seven disease trees in Lagrange, and I wondered, do you know about replanting? Antonio, you might know about this. The re replanting of trees in Lagrange. So, um, I wanted to do in the in the fall, but we're talking now about replacing some of the park equipment, some of the playground equipment. Um, so, I want to wait until. The playground equipment is in place so that I don't plant it in the way. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping for a fill, but if, if it but, it, but the whole thing is blacktop now. Yeah. So, so that whole blacktop area won't have any trees at all because you're correct, not going to break up. Correct. I should have thought about it. Um, you thought it was. I just happened to be there, and two different people asked me, mm -hmm. you know, where all the trees go, and. Where are they putting new ones? We're going to put them in the, in, around the perimeter of that area. But we, as you know, we use that for food trucks when, when, that, when that time comes. Yeah. It, it gives us more space to plan out what we want to plan out without having to worry about it. I hate to say it this way, but trees in the way. But, uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah, it, look, but I'm going to plant trees around the playground. Not I, but we're going to get trees planted around the playground and uh, around the uh, other sections in the park. So there will be the yeah, trees. Well, there will be more trees. Did, it's just that the whole thing is yeah. blacktop yeah. now. So that's why I was, I, I, I didn't, couldn't see where you would be putting them. You'd have to crack open the side. I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. So right how now, my thought is at the um, air where the playground is, Around. So around the playground, there's where the mulch and stuff yeah. is, the wood chips yeah, or whatever. Yeah, corners of that area. So I mean, that's where parents or kids are sitting around when they're resting. So yeah, I figured that's a good spot to have it. And then you leave the playground, the, the asphalt area open for. Um, so, so this is what I'm going to say, is that there is a conversation underway about replacing the entire playground. Um, and I, I th right, and I think that that conversation has to be done with the tree planting at the same time and also understanding that you know we made a promise to replace the trees right and the trees rep you know give shade yeah. right to to them so i just think that we should just work make sure we really work it, together it was never a thought to not replace the trees but it makes sense to follow the, the order you know install the, yeah. the hard escapes of the, uh, the park right. and then go all the way. Maybe we could incorporate some barrels or something. It's just all black asphalt. Well, I think oh, that, that it should be looked at almost like a, yeah. Go if, along. I know some right. kind of big barrels. Right? Like, with plants or something. No. All plants. Okay. <laughs> so, so, I, so listen, so I think that there's, that's a bigger conversation, which I think the Red Commission can can have, you know, as far as shade and additional seating and, you know, I mean, there's things that we can do to provide shade. We can even introduce those, um, those covers, you know. Those are I like those though. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like shade. I think, yeah. they will, I think they're great, but they can be seasonal. They can be seasonal. They don't have to be up all year round. I know, I know that. <laughs> just so, yes. just so <laughs> we do need to say yes or no. We need to replace the trees. Yes. But, uh, they're, 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 they are they. somewhat of a hassle to be installed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You just have to promise seven trees back in the park. More than seven, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a good segue, uh, Councilman Carter, to your update from the rec. That's it. Before it's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Bruce, <laughs> All right, so we have an audience. Mr. Bruzee. 
who was a long, long, long time recreation commissioner, volunteer, he, I think, deserves a round of applause, not <laughs> only for his recreation time, but also for his, his wealth of civic duties that he performed around the entire town of Bangladesh. Directors. Directors. Love him. So I'll, I'll do it quick. Party in the Park is back Tuesday, June 28th. It's 6 o'clock to 8.30 on the Grand Park. That's the big kickoff to our movie season. And we have music, pizza, hot dog, ice cream, inflatables. We have some rides. What's the date again? It is Tuesday, June 28th. So a week from tomorrow. 6 o'clock to 8.30. Okay. And then from there, hold on, we're going to get to that. We'll okay. get ahead of yourself. <laughs> All right, so the first movie here, it's a schedule now. So the first movie, which kicks off uh, right after Party in the Park, is In Canto. All right, the movie starts basically at 8.30 p.m. We usually have some popcorn also before the movie starts. The next week we'll have Ghostbusters Afterlife, the 2021 version. Then we'll have Cruella. Then we'll have the Mitchells versus the Machines. Then we will have Mamma Mia, Guardians of the Galaxy, Luca, and then we wrap up on Tuesday, August 16th. And it's actually going to be at 8 o'clock. It'll be the Paddington 2. Okay. All right. Uh, the camps are basically sold out. You can get on the waiting list and take your chances there. So we had the conversation started about the Grand Park playground equipment being replaced. And um, right now they're working up numbers and design plan to replace the playground equipment in the Grand Park. As Antonia stated, and something I learned about the, the tree replacement, it's not the number of trees, but it's that they have a formula used for the diameter. So if you take out a 24 inch tree, then you have to plant three eight inch trees or something like that. But whatever it is in the place of it. So it's not a tree for tree, it's a area. You know, it's more of the diameter of the tree they added up. And that's how they make a determination. That's why I said there's going to be so many more. They don't bring in, and we hit them. They just, I, I, I'll say they gave me the information on it a couple of weeks ago. And I asked them, can you just bring in a 24 inch tree and replace it? Yeah. So him and Clint both gave me the full lesson on, you know, how they plant them and how they do the balls and how they dig out. I'm sorry, I should have said that. How they dig out. And how they put them in, and, and they do a tremendous job. I mean, again, between Antonio, and Clint, and you know the entire staff, these guys do a fantastic job looking out for the well-being of the borough, and, and they're very qualified professionals. They know what they're doing. And I'm going to conclude the report on a high note that they're very qualified professionals, and they know what they're doing. Thank you. And Councilman Banks. Yeah, I just have one thing to report uh, for the library. Uh, they are going to post it on their website. They're looking for people uh, to work at the library. They want to fill some positions. Um, they're also Stand the hours. And uh, they were also, uh, after Labor Day, they may resume Saturday 9 to 5 time. So, Good. Uh, that's what I'm going to look Thank you. Um, there is no unfinished business. At this point, we will ask for a motion to open the meeting to the public. To move to Thank you. All in favor? Please. Oh, Liz, sorry, Liz, I totally forgot. Sorry. And Antonio, I'm sorry, I forgot you. Come on in. The page ran out. No. <laughs> nope. As I said, there's not too much to report. Our developments that are underway are just progressing <coughs> along the normal course. They mostly have. Um, by 40 South and that's the SoHo. They have a foundation permits and we'll be moving, more, moving forward with the construction permit shortly. Um, mostly we only have some announcements for business. So um, we do have a new tenant in the D. Lindsay space. I'm not sure if they moved in yet, but there Which is space? a blowout lab coming. The next, I next to Helen Lane, she had the Lindsay salon. Oh, right, right, right. The D. Lindsay next to it. Left. Yeah. And then we have a. So it's called the blowout lab. Yes, it's a good blowout. Personal services for, well, I don't know if it's women and men, but we'll have to see when they open up. Um, but mostly it's for uh, 
hair, um, hair blowouts and other personal services. So they're good. I don't know when they're moving in. I suspect in the next month or two. The space is pretty ready for the salon. Um, so that's, that's it. The jewelry facade space is still vacant. Um, and then the only other item is um, we had our business round table in May. We're going to be having another one June 29th. Um, and family ladies night happened between now uh, and we were here. So uh, that was a terrific success. The fact that the weather forecast was horrible. I was actually looking at my phone at 6 p.m. in the blast so while it was saying it would be torrential thunderstorms and lightning, and it was not. So uh, we did have a really nice turnout, and the event, I feel like it just every year makes little improvements that make it better. It was great. So this year, we had uh, the events coordinator, as you know, yeah. to be able to uh, effectuate changes that make a big difference. She brought in the restaurants, which we always try to do, but found three ways to do that, and then she also um, really focused on, we didn't realize that creating so much in a plaza would you really have to keep it incentivized to get people to walk around and not just stay in plaza. Mm -hmm. So that worked out great this year. I think our retailers and our restaurants were thrilled. We had a conversation, a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully next year will be even better. Um, and that's it. I mean, the mayor, you know, did a lovely thank you in, post, in the newsletter and made statements at the last meeting. So I will. Yeah, because it really is amazing um, how good it was. But right? we have to thank our merchants. Um, who really lean in, you know, they get called upon all the time. Um, and so they, they really, once again, all gave of the time and, and everything that was good. And the small and mighty committee. And the small and mighty committee. really pulling it off with Don Mackey. So um, the next item will be Fan Dam. So we'll be ready for that on July 10th. And uh, we'll keep moving with our events in 2022. So that's it. Really. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, Antonio, engineering. Hello. Um, so the plans for the United and JDOT uh, grants for this year, which, are, which is our uh, lower program for the year, uh, which include Glenwood here, uh, Kirby and Coriel, uh, that they were submitted to DOT. Uh, so it takes about 30 days for them to review. Uh, and that's what we have to go out the bid. So I'm figuring August. Uh, we go out the bid in July. Award in August and, and get into construction before the end of the year. Um, we, uh, we approved the uh, submission of the grant for Robin Road, Second Street, between South Avenue and the Grants, and the Court this evening. Um, we were going to pave a few other roads, uh, but Robin Road jumps right ahead of them. Yeah, what, what, what are we doing there? So I went, I went out there a few days ago, and it was dry, it was firm. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that tells me that there's no water leak. It's, um, the issue is just a poor sub-surface. Sub, uh, uh, so we'll replace it, we'll put some new material. Are you doing the whole road? Yes. Okay, so, but but what about the immediacy of the so, sinkhole? So tonight we authorized uh, a small project to get done for Denbar. Mm -hmm. That's part of it? That's part, that's, I'm hoping you can get out here this week. He's going to go patch it up, make it safe, so that the uh, residents can get back in the driveway. Okay, so that's the first piece. Yes. So that's, we need, we need to do that. And then this is hopefully we get authorized, uh, not authorized, but uh, awarded uh, grant in November when they come out. But, but this, what we're going to do, is going to, it's going to take care of rip up and replace that area that yeah, sunk. I think we get a, like what we talked about, a letter. Yeah, so, we, so we can hand out to the residents. Yeah, I think you have to do that. Yeah, it can yeah, just be a uh, short, uh, yeah. just because of the questions. Yeah. And you want to hand them out? Yeah, I'll hand them out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, it's up the line now. So Robin Road will be uh, new. Um, so I received the plan and specs for the carriage house roof project. Uh, I got them last week. I got a review them. Uh, and, uh, did they do a budget? They did. I, I didn't. I didn't, okay. I didn't see budget, final budget. But um, I know that there was some extra issues at the roof. It was just structurally in poor shape. Um, so there was so we need to address those issues. Uh, their initial budget 
was padded. Taken yeah, to that's what I'm saying. Was. Yeah, we uh, was tied to begin so with. So they feel confident that I hope so. we'll be okay with that number. It's yeah, a high number. High. Oh, it's, it's a wood roof, shingle, shingle, roof, wood roof, so... Um, okay. It's, it's not, it's All not right. a, when you review uh, it, give me a call. Absolutely. Um, charging station. So oh they're <laughs> they're going to we we're going to get the Type Two, which is the you get like ten miles per hour of charging or something. They're going to operate up to level three charging. That's the fast chargers. That's the fast charge. So you get a full charge within like forty-five minutes. Well, if you wait a little longer, it'll be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, so they're doing that for us. And what's the timeline? The timeline, unfortunately, with all the holdups with PSC and G and, and uh, design, uh, they don't feel confident they'll get it done this year. Oh. Oh. I don't feel confident, period. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> but the that's okay. Four, but, uh, okay. Is there a type 4 coming out? It probably is. All right, we'll talk. Uh, Sanitary sewers, their uh, lining, uh, they'll be done tomorrow. Lining um, this year's project. Um, Where's that? Up, up, up on right here. Uh, everything that we're taking this year is going to be lined. Um, they also did a section on Belvedere where we had an issue with uh, infiltration uh, during Ida. Uh, so that was done. Um, and what's Parson going out to Glenwood? He said. He's finishing up the project this week, so the week after, so next week okay. he should be out there to do it. Okay, keep an eye on that. We're next in here. Um, and then finally, Green Acres, uh, we were authorized to proceed with design uh, with the two bridges and uh, um, the stone paths at the Nature Center. Oh, so that's good. I'm going to start working on that. We got extra, uh, cross extra money. Uh, to do the Let's just the keep moving water. that. So, um, I hope to be done with a, a set of plans in, in bad month. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, I now would like to have a motion to open the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. I'd like to call forward any members of the public that are wish to speak. Five minutes. No yielding of time. Just your address for the record, please. Can you pull the yeah. Yeah. Pull it down a little bit? Yeah. Just pull it down. Yeah, oh, okay. there we go. Good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Pagan. I recently purchased my house. I actually built my dream home. I lived in Scotch Plain for 25 years. I just had my mom move in with us. We needed a bigger house. Um, we just closed on Friday on 382 North Avenue. I built the house just the way I wanted it. Unfortunately, I ran into a situation um, with a tree in front of our property that after we built everything and everything was done, it was just sitting higher and it definitely came apparent that it's, it wasn't, it's not safe. It can actually fall on, on anything, you know, and um, <coughs> everyone that walk, walks by or, you know, stops or does anything for us, the person they said, what is this? It doesn't look safe and it's not safe. So. I just wanted to ask if any any of you can just stop by and take a look at this because it's, it really isn't. It doesn't look safe at all. Well, I can tell you I had plans with uh, Antonio and Clint to ride by and take a look at it. And then once we take a look at it, then we'll be able to respond. And of course, we want your dream house to stay your dream house. Thank you. Thank you for coming right. over. Right, but let's just, I, 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 yeah, there's, just. There's history. So, right. With that, with that property and the next property next right, to it. Right. Um, first of all, I'm not a tree expert. You know, we don't have a, tr a tree expert on staff, so I just want to say that. Uh, but when the plants came, before your house was built and the properties were subdivided, that was a forested lot. It was one of the few forested lots that we still have in Vermont. So, um, the. I would say there was one issue with that whole project, it was the cutting of the trees, right? Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you remember, Anthony, you were at the meetings, right? Am I yep, yeah, it was on the planning board. So, so um, the one issue was the removal of all these trees. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. the contractor came in, we met with the, with the engineer that prepared it, we met with the owner at the time, we met with the Shade Tree Commission, um, 
and there was discussions on we're saving these trees. <coughs> there were certain trees I wanted to be saved, so that was one of them. But um, that said, it's the contractor's fault for it right should have been. It, it, it's on the contractor to do whatever he needs to do to save that tree and make sure it's safe for you and for that tree and and keep the tree where it is. So that's that's really the bottom line, and that's. What I've kind of expressed to you. Yeah. And to be honest, it was like the next door neighbors, like it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't leave it because I love trees. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, and after my husband loves the landscape. This is something my husband takes pride in. But this tree doesn't look, it looks dangerous. Like, so I, I, you know what I mean? Just I have a question. Did you understand um, from the builder or the contractor or the designer or anybody when you were in negotiations? about that tree and was yeah, that addressed? He, um, yeah, it was addressed. We talked back and forth. I mean, I actually sent it. I think I, I, think yeah, I we sent could, you we a few emails. I don't even know who you are, but I did send a few emails in reference to the situation. If you can please, you know, look at it. And I understood that every, you know, save a tree and greens. And I understand all that. But after the fact in the house. But, wait, built, but, but what was he saying? Oh, my, my, my builder said that uh, he went, you know, and, and they didn't want it, the trees have to stay, and they came in, and an inspector came in and put something green around the trees that need to stay on. But, but did you understand where the location of your house was being built with regards to that tree? Because as you say, it's directly in front of your yeah, door no, I did, I just a big gigantic mound. From foundation, when the house was being built, I didn't have no... Concept. Like in other words, like how it was gonna get built. You know what I mean? Like once the house is built, then I thought it was gonna be a problem. You know? But it's it, at that point, my house was too far already built, and to I invest money hasn't been invested, and I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing about it. And now we're dealing with that. We'll come out. Yeah, so I think that the best the bet is is that we that we'll go back, we'll look at the plans, we'll talk with the contractor, we'll talk with the individuals who decided to pick the trees at that point yeah. and, and understanding that they we saw the picture. It's, yeah. yeah, that's it's, what the answer I have in my contract. And I, I think he did try a few times, but they back and okay. forth the same. Tree. So, same tree. Thank you for your time. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. By the way, I love Amwood and my, I love my street. <laughs> thank I'm you. I'm your I'm your neighbor. I'm your neighbor. I'm your neighbor. Thank, thank you for waiting all this time. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you had to wait so long. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish to come up at this point? He's a good husband. Okay. Seeing that there's anybody that wishes to come forward, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the no public? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And may I have, oh, we'll do some quick council comments. It's been a a meeting and a half with some really great students that we saw here tonight which was awesome so thank you to all the council members that helped get our students here tonight they came out in full regalia which is really great nice. right considering wednesday is uh, graduation the last day of school tomorrow's and there's finals tomorrow's oh, and, yeah, and finals right so i was very pleased with such a great turnout from lacrosse and um track and, and um what was the one I'm missing? Volleyball. Volleyball, sorry. Volleyball. Okay. Councilman? Um, just happy graduation to all the seniors. Be well, be safe, enjoy. So, and um, it's the beginning of summer, so I hope we can all enjoy it. Thank you. Councilman Barker? Yeah, just congratulations to all the athletes and including all the athletes who maybe didn't win huge awards and, and worked really hard this spring. And, um, be safe, be smart, be kind, and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call There we go. Get a job. Get a job. <laughs> Just congratulations to all the, um, the new graduates. Uh, and enjoy the summer. Thank you, Councilman Carter. That's the one of the students. In my... 30 years in the community now, I watch a lot of those kids grow up, coach yep. them, Yep. right? They play on a lot of, not just the team that they're on now, but these kids are athletes, so you'll find them on the baseball team, you'll find them on the basketball team, you'll find them on the football teams, 
and just keep them in the pain of, of getting the job, so many of them, because it's known that I, so I run this guy's planes summer recreation league, and so many of those kids get their first jobs right, at 15, 16 with their working paper, they come in and they understand what it is to be a responsible uh, employee right from the first day. It's, it's a big pass for us because for so many of them is their initial first foray into the workforce just to have an understanding of coming to work one time, not being on your phones, whatever the uniform is. And I'm just extremely impressed and proud of these young men and young women because Colleen have had Colleen's sons, I've had your sons, and you know, so many of us, and I'm just proud of them. Now they graduate and they're going to go off into the, I guess we'll call it the real world. And even when they graduate, you know, there's so many of them that come while they're in college, they also come during the summer and they work. They work for us in, in Scott and Fanwood also, in the Fanwood camps. So yes, they need to get out and get jobs. Jobs are available for them. Yes. And we're just very proud of them. There's so many things that these young men and women could be doing, right? But they choose to do what they're doing and they're excelling. And congratulations to the parents who birth them, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And feed them and drive them all around. And to all of us who support them in, in all of their endeavors. And we just, we're proud of them. We really are. Yes, we are. Wow, I just definitely want to say congratulations to all, all the wonderful athletes, and it's just very impressive what they've accomplished. It really is. Um, um, also, um, I want to thank. I want to just wish all the dads uh, who celebrated Father's Day yesterday. I hope they had a wonderful day because um, uh, it was. Um, and also on a personal note, I'm I am happy with my own daughter who finally received her 2020. Unity achievement award. So, Patience, cool. perseverance, right? Um, it's all her mom, by the way. <laughs> all right, so I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight to tonight's meeting. It's always good to have dialogue and conversations and to um, really celebrate the best of our community, which we did tonight with our young uh, student athletes. Uh, with that, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All right, good night. Be safe. We'll see you next time.